Hey guys, ChromaFX Films here with something a bit different this time. Aside from programming and using Unity 3D, I also like to compose music. Orchestrated samples, techno music, 8-bit, and some others as well. The software I use is Mixcraft by Acoustica. Acoustica is a good company. I've been using Mixcraft for many years now. It's a great program for voice recording, instrument recording, and making music in general. So I thought I'd teach you guys how to use the program and its many features through a series of tutorials. Today I'll be starting with the basics. That includes starting a new project, the layout, and saving and loading your projects. Now I am using Mixcraft Pro Studio. This is the full version of Mixcraft. You get most of the features in the normal Mixcraft, which is what I will be covering. Uh, most of the features you get in the full version are uh, a lot of equalizer effects and just more advanced tools that you would use for uh, more advanced work. And everything I will be teaching you guys can be used in the normal version of Mixcraft. So when you start up the project, you get this new project window. And here you can uh, name your projects. I'm going to call this one uh, Tutorial one you can uh, change your project save folder uh, you can change the default folder in the preferences I'll show you that in a little bit you can load a previous project or a template um, browsing just uh, will you know load up a window and then you can search for your uh, song there if it doesn't appear from the list now you have these three thumbnails here the first one recording yourself this basically sets up the program for uh, recording with a microphone, kind of similar to what I'm using right now. You can use it for voice recording and uh, lots of other things too. Now the second one, build loop and beat matched music. This kind of sets it up for um, using uh, loops because Mixcraft is full of just thousands of different loops that you can mix together and make your own music. You can also uh, kind of import um, other songs and then kind of remix them up a bit. Actually, it, it sets up the program to be able to do that a little bit easier. Um, changes some of the settings around. And build virtual instrument tracks. This third one, it creates two boxes, uh, two tracks um, up here. Uh, track one and track two or replaces them. It has a little keyboard icon. Basically, you can add in your own um, instrumental clip, and then it creates this virtual keyboard uh, down on the bottom bar over here and that's where you can add in the notes yourself and write your own music that way. If you have a MIDI keyboard, you can just play it and it can record it, uh, but if you don't, you can still do it anyway. So we're just going to press close here and I'll set the new project. I'm going to start it with Build Virtual Instruments, and I'll do it anyway. And as you can see, you have Instrument Track 1, Instrument Track 2, I do a lot of uh, virtual instruments, so I don't usually use these tracks as much, but uh, it depends what kind of song I'm working on. So the basic look of Mixcraft is what you have here. Uh, on this left side, in this left bar, you have all the audio tracks. Uh, it automatically starts you with eight, but you can delete some tracks, and to add a new one, you right click in the um, on a audio track, press insert track, and then it'll give you a list of uh, options here. Audio track is what we have here. Virtual instrument is what we have at the top, number one and two. And video track, this is something new that Mixcraft has. I don't really use it, um, but it is helpful uh, if you would be making music videos, kind of to follow along. It helps out that way. But Mixcraft is mainly powerful when creating music, um, not necessarily video. So the next thing you have up here is this uh, menu bar. This creates a new project. This loads a project. This, you can import your own sound files into the project. This is uh, when you're editing sound effects. Sometimes when I edit my sound effects, I import uh, some other creations I've made from from a while back and then I kind of mix them together and add effects to it. This just saves. These are just basic basic options you would use to just navigate 
uh, in this workspace. And you have volume, pan. Now, low pass cutoff and a high pass cutoff. Uh, basically, what that means is if I actually set that, okay, I guess it doesn't work for instrument tracks. Mm -hmm. What it does is it automatically creates this slow fade um, at the beginning of the tracks, trying to, it, it kind of like slowly increases the volume uh, or the frequency of the track. And over here, this is a very, very important tool, you have the snap feature. Now, you can work with the snap off, but if you want precise timing on all your instruments and beats, I would highly recommend turning this on. Snap to measure, this is, you can only snap to um, uh, every four beats. You can do half, uh, fourth, you know, eight, sixteenth. You can go all the way up to a sixty-fourth note. Now, that is very fast. Uh, I don't necessarily use this that much, only when I'm trying to make uh, sound effects but you could be making different types of songs there are multiple reasons you can use every single one of these features uh, that's up to you guys now what we have here is a uh, basic uh, just playback bar you have the record button this basically rewinds to the very beginning of the song this rewinds by <clears throat> this rewinds by uh, a beat or so so it only uh, rewinds a little bit every time normal play and then it's the same thing just fast forwarding for these two this turns on the loop feature and I'm just going to import something quickly from the library to show you an example you can yeah. cool thing about Mixcraft is it automatically detects the tempo of the music uh, in this library and um, the cool thing about Mixcraft is that uh, in their library, the they have all their uh, library uh, loops have an automatic tempo uh, switch, so everything works together really well. So you could have all of these different sounds, and they all actually work perfectly together. Uh, about 99% of the time, they sound really nice together. The other 1%, uh, it just sounds like a mess. But, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully you won't just make a that one percent song and you hopefully you guys will be making some really cool music with this program now uh, let me actually import something back I'll use this organ piece now this loop feature you can change where the loop starts basically what it does is when you when you play a song and you hit the end it will automatically uh, restart the song from the beginning and just keep it on an infinite loop if you turn it off, once it hits the end, it just stops. Now you can use that if you're trying to listen for a certain part of the song or trying to change something very uh, slightly. You can hear the differences that way. Now this actually, uh, you can adjust the metronome settings. This is really helpful by using um, Alt-O and uh, Alt-P. You can change uh, when it plays the metronome. When you're recording, it's super helpful to be able to play on beat if the song is, is a, has a really hard beat to follow. Um, I use this all the time uh, for, for my recording, and I highly recommend you use this. Another thing is the uh, punch in and punch out. This basically tracks uh, where you can record your voice. If you start recording on measure one, it won't actually start picking up your voice and actually placing it into the clip until it reaches measure two and uh, ends at measure four. Past measure four, it'll automatically stop. Uh, this is really helpful for recording um, voices and not having the audio file continuously move on and never end. Uh, in other words, it can get really messy, and this helps you keep it clean, organized, and on beat. Another thing is this bar up here, track. This is another way you can just insert the tracks uh, marking. This is where you can pretty much give the song a new trait. Uh, the color doesn't really matter. This is just for you to help keep organized. Um, you can title it, and you can change the tempo of the song. This is helpful if you want to slow down or speed up the song. You can also change the key of the song. This is mainly used for um, loops, I would say. If the, if, the, if the actual loop itself or track has a key signature attached to it, then this would uh, come into effect. 
and the signature signature you can change uh, how many beats are in a measure and the bottom bar down here you have four tabs the first tab is your project tab this is basically where you can change the main tempo of the song and the key of the song same thing with the signature you can change how many beats are in a measure measure sound uh, let me add a sound clip in here you can automatically change the beat if the loop has a beat a, a default beat attached to it here you go you can change the key and noise reduction this is really helpful when you have noise reduction this is really helpful when you have a noisy background you can actually change this to um, any percentage and it will automatically remove the the uh, background noises uh, it creates two um, bars there's an in and there's an out section where you can actually change where it detects the noise volume is and you can adjust it it's really helpful the mixer uh, the only thing here that is not up here on the uh, audio tracks is these uh, frequency changers you have three knobs top one high frequency you got the mids and you got the lows and all this stuff all these buttons is the same options that you have up here and I will cover what they do in another tutorial then you have your library this is where all the thousands of different loops and sound effects um, are stored you can sort them by uh, key style instrument name uh, so on and you can disable um, which ones you don't want to show like um, if I want just sound effects it'll, it'll disable um, the loops and then other way around uh, this is really helpful if you're like searching or trying to like narrow it down for the kind of sound effect that you want and then of course you can just search and you can import your own sound effects but they have to be the uh, right format and the last thing saving your project to save your project all you have to do is file and save as save just saves what you've worked on uh, and save as saves it as a new file that you can access later now I would highly recommend saving multiple versions of your file just in case uh, if just in case if you want to go back to an earlier version or you don't like some of the changes you made and you can't undo that far uh, also saving as you can this is what you can do you can save as type and then right here you have all these options this is basically exporting the sound file so I can either save this as a mixcraft project or I can save this as an mp3 file or a WAV file There's another way to export files. That's by going File and Mix Down To, and then you can mix it down that way. Uh, either way works great. So that is it, guys. I hope the, the I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I plan on making more uh, to follow. I my gosh. So thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I will be making more of these tutorials in the future, so stick around for them. Thank you for all your support, and don't forget to subscribe.